Hey, what's going on guys? What is going on? I was back here um, in this mastermind. There's probably like 20, maybe 15, 20 people in there uh, last few days. And I just noticed my hair. I've been doing this all day. I've been doing that. That's why my hair is going crazy. But anyway, I wanted to share with you guys uh, what's going on. I wanted to share with you guys the uh, the top seven takeaways here. We got to run off to the airport, but um, man, these events are crazy. The amount of information you get, um, you learn stuff that people are doing right now. Uh, stuff that's not going to end up in textbooks for six, seven, eight years. Um, we we learn it right now. So hey. <laughs> Um, so anyway, let me drop in um, some of the keys. So number one, um, you know, um, we always talk about like self-development and that kind of thing. And um, once again, like all these people in here are self-developing in whatever they're trying to do, um, whatever their niche is, but they're self-developing every single day. Um, they're working on something, they're coming to masterminds. It's like never ending um, it's like a never ending education cycle. And one thing that I just noticed is like people who are really, um, doing well in whatever they do, they're self educating themselves every day, whether it's learning more about sales, learning more about how your competitors are marketing, reading something, listening to a podcast, whatever, coming to a mastermind, whatever. Um, but self development is the ultimate way to mastery. Um, whether, whether you're trying to master your your health, your relationships, your business, or whatever. Um, here's the other thing we learned about mastery that <clears throat> was really interesting. Um, if you really think about it, mastery is actually never fully achieved, okay? And if you think you've achieved mastery, um, that's, when you, that's when you start failing. So that was really interesting, like a mind blower to me, as I said, okay, you know, I've reached mastery in this, I've reached mastery in that. But if you really, you know, like with technology and competition and all those things going on, like if I really think I've met, ma I've come to a place of mastery, that's probably the day I'm going to start losing, start losing revenue, start losing customers, start, you know, and that's the day I'm going to start blaming it on everything, right? I'm going to blame it on the government, I'm going to blame it on the leads, I'm going to blame it on the system, I'm going to blame it on whatever, right? So, um, <clears throat> so anyway, I think, you know, the, the first one, Self-development is the ultimate way to mastery, but true mastery can never be ultimately achieved. So someone um, shared that. I think that was crazy, awesome takeaway. Um, number two, people are not interested in our products. Um, they're not interested in motivation for, for a lot of us, okay? They're the, the, the most uh, dynamic things out there are movements, okay? And so um, if you can position what you do in some way um, to where, you know, you are not just out there being a chiropractor, you're not just out there, you know, um, selling your whatever, your speaking or whatever it is you do, but you're a part of a movement or you're a part of a new breed of young or women or whatever, whatever it is, right? Like if you can, if you can make what you do into more of a movement, um, that's what a lot of these guys were talking about. They've seen their sales double and triple um, over like a year when they start tying in what they do to more of like a movement or a cause or, you know, where, where it makes it bigger than life, you know, or, or bigger than just who they are, bigger than just the sale or bigger than just the deal. Um, so, uh, man, I, that, that, that when somebody started talking about that, that just started making my head spin around all the different ways, the stuff that we sell that we can um, make our, you know, legitimately. Now I'm not talking about lying. I'm not talking about, um, you know, being, uh, um, annoying or whatever. I'm talking about being honest, uh, you know, about, you know, tying what you do into more of a movement. Um, somebody said, you know, you want to be a man on a mission, right? Nobody wants to buy a mortgage or buy a whatever from just anybody, right? And people will pay more when they feel like somebody's on a mission or they're a part of something bigger and better. So that's, that's the, that's number two. Um, try to make whatever you do, whatever you sell, try to be on a, a man or a woman on a mission and be a part of a movement or position yourself as a part of a movement, even in your language, in your w website, you know, in your lead page, whatever. Um, number three was, you know, um, people who are continuing to do well and be stable, um, are, really good at differentiating themselves from their competition. 
this is something that a lot of like solopreneurs are really, we're really bad at this is like, um, you know, how do, how are we any different than uh, the other thousand people who do what we do? And so we really went deep and wide on that topic in terms of how do we become different? Um, and the easiest ways, the fastest ways to become different, um, was to, um, to in, inject your story and be a story seller. So your, so your, your stories and your personal story becomes a part of what you're selling. Uh, and you see this happen a lot. This is why big companies get motivational speakers or they get, um, I'm sorry, not motivational speakers, but they get people to be the up and front personality of the business um, is because um, it's somebody that other people can relate to, right? It's, it's a person. It's not just a slogan. Um, and, and so somebody was, there was somebody in here talking uh, yesterday about, you know, she, um, there's no one that has her story and her story wasn't like remarkable, but she interjected her story. Um, and so, um, yeah, totally agree, Greg. And so like, uh, um, you know, I want to challenge all of us to try to interject your story more and try to be, become more self-aware of when you're doing it and, um, try to be open and honest, not just about all the good things, right? But the things that make your story powerful and that people are going to connect with, like really connect with is going to be the difficulties, the, the challenges you had, the, you know, the, the, the times when things were not as, as good. Um, I'm going to have somebody do, um, an interview. We're going to do a Facebook live interview with the lady who um, was in our mastermind and she is starting a movement called, um, 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 wife, entre entrepreneur wives. And it's all about the realness of entrepreneur wives and what they go through, right? Because a lot of entrepreneurism, especially when you're small, it's a lot, a lot of it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're fighting against big people who are established or big brands or whatever. So it's a little bit of fake it till you make it until you get up there. And while you're in that stage, the wife takes on so much, um, there's so much, so many things that happen that, um, that you just never really consider. And so she's launching a whole thing about, um, entrepreneur wives and she, and she's starting a whole brand around it. So I'm going to, we're going to interview her. Um, I would say in the next month or so, she's launching a book on it and a whole movement around it. And I think it's awesome. But, but once again, she's interjecting her story in the realness of her story. Um, and I think we can all take something from that. You know, if you want to be different, which is what you're going to have to be. There's just too much competition. There's, you know, technology makes things too fast to hack and all those things. The way you become defendable where you can defend a corner of the market is to interject your story. Nobody can take your story, right? Um, the other thing that we learned about um, differentiation is instead of saying I have experience in, okay, this is a really cool hack. Instead of saying I have experience in doing something, you can say, um, uh, somebody was saying how um, the, they, they started using the phrase, I've been doing research for the past 15 years on blah, blah, blah. And, and he said normally um, he, he would always say for the last, fi you know, forever, he's always said, I have experience doing blah, blah, blah for 15 years. But saying I have experience for 15 years, everyone says that, right? So it was a kind of a really cool hack um, and kind of something I don't think a lot of people are doing is he's exchanging the word experience for research. And as long as it's legitimate and, and your, you know, your experience has been self-research and those kind of things, I think you, you can legitimately say that. So that's, that's awesome. Well, I'm excited to, to put that into my, you know, website, into my sales pitches and those kind of things that, you know, um, you know, we're a such and such a company. We have 15 years of, ex of research done in this field and that's why we do whatever, right? Do you, do you get that? So, um, okay, moving on. Um, number four, um, if you're, if you're, if, if for those of us that are having problems closing sales, okay, if you're having problems closing, um, there was a lot of discussion around this typical things you hear scarcity and whatever, but somebody brought up something that, um, they, they talked they did a, a whole, a, a kind of a, a talk about takeaway selling. Okay. And what takeaway selling is slight, it's scarcity. It's a play on, on, on scarcity selling, but takeaway selling is basically the entire time you're, you're interjecting your product, um, or you're discussing or somebody's um, starting to understand about your product. Um, 
you're constantly saying, um, you're telling them in one hand, I think this is right for you. But on the other hand, you're saying, I don't think um, this is for you. This, And you're essentially saying, this is probably for somebody a little bit better than you. <laughs> and so um, it was kind of like an interesting like psychology um, thing. But um, I thought I would share that, that, you know, um, there's a lot of people were talking about different ways to do takeaway selling and do it continuously through their pitch. Um, like somebody, uh, James Malinchak, the, the leader of our, our, our coach here, he was sharing how, how when he sells um, and tries to get a big speaker to come, um, he was sharing how he will... Um, He'll call up, call up the you know the secretary or whoever, and he'll be like, "Yeah, I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think you know, uh, we can afford you, um, because." And so right away it's takeaway. It's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, we're good. We're, we're perfect. Our audience is perfect. Um, your our audience is gonna love you. Hundreds and hundreds of people are gonna love what you guys do. You guys are gonna get your message out. But I don't think we can afford you, <laughs> you know." So it's like, it's this constant like push pull. And um, I've learned really young that like you want that push pull in the sales environment where you're you're the one pushing and pulling, um, and so uh, I've called it push pull a lot in the past. But but I like the phrase takeaway selling where you're t you're giving 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 and then you're pulling it back, giving 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 and you're pulling it back. And so there's different ways you can do that in sales pages and those kind of things. But then at the end, he he, he basically kind of wraps it into um, you know if. Uh, you know, he's like, you know, all we do is we, you know, we pay about $4,000 um, for, for, for an interview. And I don't know what you guys pay for like a radio or podcast interview, but I'm sure you're much more than an interview. And when, when he says interview, like the people are like, no, so-and-so speaker doesn't even get paid for interviews. Like interviews we do free. And so it's, once again, it's this constant like push pull thing that's happening where they're giving and taking. They're, it's it's a mental psych, psychology game. I, I probably don't have enough time to really go deep into it, but um, but play with that and think about that. Um, I thought that was really cool. Um, another cool hack to share is that um, green. Okay, uh, research shows us whether it's big box retailers, online, whatever technology, but green means go, red means stop. Okay. And remember that in what you do, in everything that you do. Um, green means go, red means stop. So if you want somebody in sales copy or uh, on a banner or a flyer, if you want them to stop and really pay attention, red is really powerful. Um, green means go, continue, buy, click, whatever. Um, so you want your call to action to be some version of green, ideally, um, unless it really clashes with your brand or whatever. But um, if you're worried about conversions and people converting into sales or leads or whatever, I would really think about green means go, red means stop. Um, and then, um, so number six, almost done here. Number six is um, there was some research and things um, discussed around, this, is, this has been the truth for as long as I can ever remember. But the two most actionable words in marketing, what do you guys think the two most actionable words in marketing are? Um, anybody want to take a guess? The two most actionable words in marketing, okay? Whether it's sales copy, whether it's discussions, whether it's selling in person, B2B corporate sales, whatever, the two most actionable words that get people to move is free is number one, and gift is number two, okay? Um, and so I started thinking about that, like, you know, I don't like to um, use the word free and gift all the time and be sleazy. I think some people kind of overdo it and make it cheesy, but, and it really depends on who you're selling to. Some, some markets, they just want the word free everywhere. Um, but, uh, um, but I thought through like all the different ways that we can inject the word free or free gift. <laughs>